I'll just keep it Iowa Farmer simple. When we mess with the neck, we mess with this nerve. When we mess with the neck and the cranial system, we mess with the vagus nerve and its function. And then when we carry that forward and we see this whole long bullet pointed list of essential life functions that the vagus nerve does, that one injury, that one intervention has a multitude of consequences. Short term, but most importantly in our conversation with pediatrics in the perfect storm, long term. Welcome to the Experience Miracles podcast, where we help parents find hope, answers, and drug-free help to overcome your child's chronic health challenges. I'm your host, Dr. Tony Ebel, and I'll be sharing my experiences as both a dad and a doctor on every episode. I can take the latest science and neurology of healing and break it down in the most simple and relatable way possible. We'll take on the toughest topics and answer your biggest questions through interviews with other amazing parents and leading experts, leaving you with practical action steps that you can take to help your child heal and thrive. It's time to expect and experience miracles. Let's get started. All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Experience Miracles podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Tony Ebel, and this is me jamming with you on a solo episode, deep dive into the vagus nerve. Now, this deep dive conversation into the vagus nerve is not the first time you've heard us talk about this very important, most important by far nerve in the entire body. If you listen to previous episodes about the perfect storm, about birth trauma, you know that we talk a lot about the vagus nerve there because that's what's happening in the perfect storm through birth trauma is we're really messing with the vagus nerve. And then in future episodes, I'm going to take us really deep into all of the functions of the vagus nerve and all of the important components that it can, that all the keys, you know, that it literally multiple keys it holds to unlocking healing of all kinds for your kids and for your family. And at the same time, we're going to then take these individual components of vagus nerve function. We're going to talk about inflammation today. We're going to talk about the gut and the microbiome. And we're going to talk about social, emotional, behavioral regulation. We're going to talk about speech and communication. So anything and everything your child, your family is going through, you're going to hear about it on this conversation because the vagus nerve, it's literally nicknamed the wandering protector. It's a nerve with more jobs than any other nerve in the body. And so pretty much everybody, every challenge your family is going through, we're talking about it on this episode. And then what I'm going to do on future episodes, because I just think out of everything within the nervous system, if you will, all the pieces and parts of the nervous system, this is the most important one. And I would even, if I'm taking a multiple choice test and somebody asks you, hey, what is the most important thing you could talk about to get people healthy that they don't know about yet, the foundational answer is the nervous system. But then if we ask the question, okay, what part of it is the most important? I would choose vagus nerve over the brain. And here's why. You're going to learn when we get into this. The vagus nerve is a sensory reporting processing nerve and the brain runs 99.9 percent .9 on autopilot so really the vagus nerve is the mom i always use this analogy the vagus nerve is out and about controlling coordinating organizing everything and because it's a sensory nerve it's going down into all the tissues organs and glands now this is a goofy analogy but it fits it's asking questions hey how are things how's it going and then it's reporting information back to the central nervous system and autonomic nervous system. And so the rest of it's just running on autopilot, which is, you know, kind of the dad's role, right? You kind of wake us up sometimes, and we, oh yeah, 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 I'm here, I'm driving, you know? And so we're a little more autopilot, whereas the moms are a definite more level of engagement and investigation. And I think that's why the vast majority of listenership so far on this podcast is moms. But at the same time, will you please always share these um, podcast episodes with the dudes and with my fellow dads as well? Because a lot of times we may not be as apt to go out and get this information ourselves. But man, once we have it, it clears up so confusion, so much confusion for us too as to why our kids are struggling. And that's, you know, it doesn't matter here, mom or dad, when our kids are sick and struggling with chronic illness or even acute illness, we're both the same. We want to know why. We want to know what to do to get them out of it. And that is the absolute purpose of the Experience Miracles podcast. Well, since we're jamming me with me to you today, generally when I have, so we go every other one, we have an interview and I get to go into their story. So I kind of have a little note here that I feel like every time I do a deep dive episode, I am Captain Nerd. I am literally, if you're watching this on, on YouTube, which we have a great YouTube channel, by the way, um, if you love to see, you know, some of our educational videos with some more visuals, you can go there and subscribe and check those out. But I'm wearing my nerdiest of all nerd t-shirts and it says 
what happens in the Vegas does not stay in the Vegas, which that's my vote for the title of this episode. Now, our podcast team is Morgan and John and Aaron. They're way smarter than me about what things should be titled. So I don't know if it'll make it across the finish line that way. But again, that is the conversation of today. This stress, this inflammation, this toxicity, this physical injury from birth trauma that gets into our kids' vagus nerves, wreaks havoc on it, creates vagus nerve dysfunction and disorders, is literally the missing link that will solve not just one or two of your kids' challenges, but when we get done with this and all the conversations we'll have on the podcast about the vagus nerve, you're going to see it's going to solve literally a multitude of challenges, if not all of the things your family is going through. So speaking of my family, so I figure every time I should just give you a couple minutes to get to know me even a little bit better. If you are going to trust me with your kiddos health information. And um, so I'll do a couple of these episodes where I share a little personal story at the front and then I'll go to my, you know, boss and processing system, Mrs. Christina Ebel, and I'll let her, I'll have her decide, you know, whether this was a good idea or not. And if it keeps making its way into future solo episodes, so Las Vegas, V-E-J-G, I can spell, V-E-G-A-S, is actually a city that we're all pretty aware of, right? Now, what we're going to talk about the vagus nerve is it's the rest, regulation, relaxation, and health function nerve in the body, which is kind of funny because Las Vegas, the city, is the antithesis and the 180 of rest. It's the city that doesn't sleep, right? It's the city of all sorts of not healthy things that happen there. And so like a lot of us when I was younger, so I didn't find chiropractic, didn't really find wellness until I was about done with college. And that's my transformation journey there. So I took a couple of the trips to Las Vegas, pre-wellness, pre-marriage. And I always remember if you've ever flown into McCarran Airport there in Las Vegas, they've got these massive escalators, right? And it's it's usually a different flight going to that city than any other city. People are, you know, ready to party. And then you go down these escalators and people are just, the, the airport in Las Vegas is like the entire city of Las Vegas. It's insane. There's flashing lights. It's again, the antithesis of rest. So I took a couple of trips there, pre-wellness, pre-marriage, pre-dad era, and had some fun, right? Uh, went on a spring break trip, once went for the March Madness tournament and had some fun. Well, where I'm going with this is just like this conversation where we're going to take what you may think of Las Vegas as crazy and nuts, and we're going to turn it into health and healing and regulation. Well, then later on in life, my oldest sister, my beautiful rock star sister, Holly, who is an OT, so she's the fellow nerd in the family with me in terms of healthcare. She meets her incredible husband, Bill, who is actually a Chicago boy originally, but then moved out to Las Vegas, um, runs a golf course out there, has lived out there, set his life up there. They fall in love. They get married. Holly moves to Las Vegas. And then my parents, if you've mentioned me say on the podcast or mentioned, if you've heard me mention that I'm a farm kid from Iowa, if you were to Google Iowa corn and cattle farmer, my dad's picture should pop up tough as heck. A handshake that'll, you know, break your hand and he's not even trying. The leathered skin from all the time outside in the way hot and the way cold, just getting it done. My dad is the most incredible human I've ever or will ever meet. He means the world to me. He's taught me all of my hard work, all of my humility. And so when you think of an Iowa farmer, once again, in the same, th in the same kind of conversation here, you do not think of Las Vegas, Nevada. But when you're a grandpa and an Iowa farmer, you want to be by your family. So when it came time to retire, my parents actually moved to Las Vegas and have lived there for the last decade plus. And they live right in the same neighborhood as Holly and Bill, my family. And they're just there with the grandkids and living their best life. Now, if you'd have told me 20 years ago that my dad would even want to step foot in that city, because we lived on a blacktop road, those of you that live in small Midwest towns, um, a blacktop road that had, you know, it's a small town. My town literally didn't even have a stoplight when people go, hey, how many, did you live in a one stoplight town? No, there wasn't a stoplight. Nobody wanted to stop there. And then we lived in the country, three miles outside. And he wanted to move to a gravel road when I was growing up because there was too much traffic on our paved road. And now he lives in the most crazy high traffic city ever. So when we go to visit him and we go hang out, which we do all the time, they're our family. And I'm coming into that airport. Let me just tell you this. It's a different 
tone. It's a different plan. Instead of going in like when I was younger, ready to get after it, I go in ready to relax, ready to hang in my family's pool. And um, so you may not think of Las Vegas as a rest, relaxation, (laughs) family vacation town, but we do. So let's convert that just wild and crazy, probably not that pertinent, but sort of pertinent story into this conversation about the Vegas nerve. Because here's what's going on. Most of our families, our nervous systems are living the Las Vegas, Nevada, struggling to sleep, always wound up, always stressed out, always toxic, always sympathetic, dominant life. That's why for literally almost every single family and every single kid out there, the Vegas nerve, V-A-G-U-S, is our number one most important thing we can learn about, be about, and you'll see as this episode and future ones go, and learn how to stimulate and activate and get back online. Because for most of us in this perfect storm, high stress, high inflammation, overstressed, overscheduled world, our vagus nerve, which is in charge of rest, relaxation, relaxation, sleep, digestion, immune modulation, social, emotional, behavioral regulation, we'll break down each of these, it's toast. It's offline, it's injured, it's dysfunctional. And so we can go out into the world and medicine can say, hey, all these stress-based conditions, anxiety and ADHD, let's just medicate them down. And the traditional medicine can go into all of our autoimmune and our respiratory challenges and they can say, let's just shut down inflammation. Let's just load you up on antibiotics and shut everything down. So the reason we have more chronic illness and more struggles with our kids and our families than ever before is we're not even trying to actually drug-free, naturally battle this stress, perfect storm, inflammatory world we live in. We're just trying to stuff it down and cover it up so we can keep going into it. And that is why not only are our kids the sickest generation right now, but our parents are as well. Literally, you could carry this conversation, which is not necessarily this podcast, but you can take it all the way into grandpas and grandmas and life expectancy for the first time in the last couple of years has turned in the wrong direction because we do know, everybody knows, I'm not shocking anyone with this introduction to this podcast, that we live in the most high stress, overscheduled, anxiety, you know, tension filled world ever. And our kids are right along with us, which is more inflammation and more illness. And we all know that more medications is not going to do the job to get us out of this perfect storm. But there is one nerve who is literally designed by God to do this job, to calm us down, to activate digestive motility and elimination and anti-inflammation and endocrine balancing. And the list goes on with the vagus nerve. So let me go on and get into it. I want you to know that if your child struggles with autism, ADHD, anxiety, asthma, allergies, and autoimmune disorders, this is your conversation. If your child is struggling with pandas and pans and pots and OCD and those sort of challenges, this is your conversation. If your child right now doesn't have neurosensory sort of challenges, sensory processing, this is your conversation. If instead they have some of those early perfect storm, those pre-perfect storm challenges like colic and constipation and eczema and chronic ear infections, this vagus nerve conversation is one you're going to want to listen all the way through maybe two times over. And at the same time, this conversation is for you if your child is struggling with developmental delays and missed motor milestones, gross motor, fine motor, speech and communication. Because, oh yeah, the vagus nerve modulates and regulates that as well. So this is the conversation that we have with our patients all the time about the vagus nerve, about regulating and rebalancing and repairing the nervous system. And it's the conversation you're going to see when we get in the middle of this and done with this one. It's one of those things where you're going to ask yourself, why did no one tell me this before? This is so simple. How can it be so profound? And that's one of the things that I think trips people up with nervous system focused pediatric and family chiropractic. How can one thing help all these things? It sounds, I tell my patients all the time, I get it, I get dads, I get why you could be skeptical because we live in this very segmented, specialized, siloed world of medicine where no one medical doctor takes care of everything. They're really kind of just their expert in this own little lane. Well, the vagus nerve is a better expert in all of those tissues, organs, and glandular systems than any single doctor in there because the vagus nerve is in charge of regulating and controlling all of them. So when you become an expert 
in vagus nerve function. And when you become an expert in autonomic and central nervous system function, you are therefore an expert in everything. Now, I fully understand in the first 10 to 15 minutes that that's a heck of a statement, but that's also why as parents, you should be so excited that you found the Experience Miracles podcast and you're learning about nervous system focused care that is drug free and wildly effective, not to treat or cure anything. That'll never be the conversation. In fact, I've been working on this vagus nerve stuff for 15 years. And I think it's as far back as like um, 10 or 11 years ago, Scientific American, obviously one of the leading journals that kind of tries to get out ahead of new trends in healthcare and medicine, had a picture that would look like it came from one of our websites and it said electric cures and then another article called electric medicine. See, and that's the story, that whole article on the front page of a very important, and then another conversation in Time Magazine a few years later about the vagus nerve. You can Google it and you'll see mainstream media and mainstream medicine talking about the vagus nerve, half accurate and entirely incomplete because they would try and take medications. They would try and take devices and get things to be cured because in medicine, that's their approach stuff down and eradicate symptoms and illnesses. That's not how health is built. Health is built from the inside out. Health is built by restoring and rebuilding function within your child's body. And the way, the very first thing you must do on this restoration, rebuild and repair process is tap into the vagus nerve, the parasympathetic system, and the nervous system as a whole. So let's break this nerdy nerve down, give you the nuts and bolts, and then promise you this, when we get done, just like every single episode, this is not just an information episode, this is really an activation, especially with this one. This is a take action episode, and we'll get you how to do that. We'll get you into that when we get to the end of this one. So let's break down the vagus nerve's anatomy and function. So the anatomy of the vagus nerve really tells the story. It'll, it'll segue us right into the function of the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve is actually the 10th cranial nerve. There are 12 pairs of cranial nerves. And this one, cranial nerve number 10, is the biggest the longest of the cranial nerves. It's not technically the longest nerve in the body, but this is definitely the most important nerve in the body and one of the longest by far. And so the vagus nerve branches from the brainstem. Again, I know we're on a podcast here. If you do happen to be jamming with us on, on YouTube, you can see me pointing to my brainstem and upper neck area. And the vagus nerve is nicknamed the wandering nerve because it's one of only two out of those 12 cranial nerves that leaves what's called the cranial vault. So it goes down through the foramen magnum, which is not just a cool set of words to say, but it's actually the opening at the bottom of our skull that allows the brainstem and the spinal cord to be connected to the rest of the body. So people always say, hey, are you a brain-based chiropractor? Heck no, that, that's, that actually limits what we do. The brain is not separate from the brainstem. The brainstem is not separate from the spinal cord. The spinal cord are not separate from the spinal and sensory and motor nerves. The nervous system is one big entity. All these little anatomical details we're going to provide when we teach this stuff is coming out of anatomy textbook. But what I want you to hear all the time is when it's in operation, aka life, it's all connected. So when you access one component of the nervous system, you are able to access every component of the nervous system. Now, what I wanted to explain the anatomy of the vagus nerve, though, so intricately and detailed is not to turn you into a nerdy doctor, although any of you who want to sign up to become a pediatric chiropractor, about 30 to 40 percent of chiropractors go to chiropractic school as a second career because they had some health condition or their kids had some health condition and medicine failed them. And they tried all that. They did all that. Then they got better with chiropractic or their kid got better with chiropractic and they want to sign up and become a pediatric chiropractor. And I think that is a fantastic idea. We have sent 85 of our patients off to chiropractic school, and I hope and pray that this podcast generates hundreds, thousands of future chiropractors one day. So little sneak in clip right there to say, hey, go to school, come back, work for us. We need you. This thing's blowing up. Conversation about nervous system regulation in today's world, blowing up. Conversation around the vagus nerve, go to TikTok. It's got millions of hashtags, Instagram as well. We own this conversation because we can access the vagus nerve. So that's what I wanted to teach you about the anatomy. Even though we're on a podcast, I'm kind of drawing this out visually because that is the right in front of us secret ticket to understand why the vagus nerve is so important and such a potent healing mechanism because of its location and its function. The vagus nerve is the middleman, literally between the brain 
and the most important parts of the body. The vagus nerve regulates cardiac and respiratory function. You know, heart beating, lungs breathing, fairly essential to every single moment of life. And then the vagus nerve just fully controls, modulates, and regulates gastrointestinal, so gut, GI function, motility, absorption, elimination, detoxification, microbiome regulation. Yep, the vagus nerve does that. There's an electrical control to the digestion, more so a neurological control to the gut that is more important than even the nutritional influence on the gut. And so it's called the enteric or the interoception sort of system that's in there. The vagus nerve is that. So forget the words enteric, forget I said them. It's all about the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve controls the immune system and inflammation. The vagus nerve controls the endocrine system, serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, adrenals, cortisol, all these things. The vagus nerve controls our social, emotional, speech, communication, and behavioral regulation. And the reason it does that is because the vagus nerve branches from the brainstem, goes down through the frame of magnum, down all the way through the neck, through the thorax, and it's like this big river with all these different extensions to it. And all of these nerves go all over the body down to about two thirds of the digestive process. Now, I want this to go to parents. So I'm not going to give you a like, ooh, it stops at the, you know, ce it goes past the celiac plexus and then the mesenteric. And, you know, we don't need the big words. We just need the general location. It goes down to about two thirds. It goes really, really, really low into the abdomen and into the thorax. And it controls all of those functions, those essential healing and life-giving functions all along the way. And then there's another little plexus of sacral nerves that comes from what's called the sacrum. So S2, S3, S4 areas of the sacrum. And they go up and they control kind of the bottom end of digestion. So that's why when we're adjusting the sacrum for constipated kiddos, which is a very important adjustment to make for them, we call that the poop button at the bottom. So maybe we'll have a poop button. Maybe the sacral nerve plexus, it's not it's not as cool as the vagus nerve, even by name, you know, so I don't know if the sacral nerve plexus is ever going to get its own podcast episode. So sorry, sacrum, but you know, vagus nerve is, is the cool one. All right. And so that location, that wandering nerve anatomy tells us that all along the way, it has these very important functions. Now, here's another very important thing to know about the vagus nerve, especially for parents out there whose children are struggling with sensory issues, spectrum issues, and those sort of things. The vagus nerve is about 80 to 90% sensory. It is an afferent nerve, meaning it has all these nerve endings and these nerve routes going all the way down into these systems, the heart, the lungs, the esophagus, the stomach, the small intestine, the adrenals, the liver, the pancreas, you name it. It is in there with satellites effectively, these sensory nerve endings, and then it reports from there back up to the brain. So putting this all together and, and really kind of tying together previous episodes about birth trauma and the perfect storm and antibiotics and those things, and then going forward into the conversation we'll keep having on the podcast, this is why birth trauma that affects and injures the vertebrae, the soft tissues, the nerves, the muscles, the ligaments, along the neck and the brainstem is such a big deal because what's happening in millions of birth interventions is we're injuring and damaging vagus nerve function at its origination location and at its earliest journey of going down into the thorax and the system and then reporting back up to the brain. So forceps, vacuum, emergency C-suction, induction, cord wrapped, breech presentation, and I'll just keep it Iowa Farmer simple. When we mess with the neck, we mess with this nerve. When we mess with the neck and the cranial system, we mess with the vagus nerve and its function. And then when we carry that forward and we see this whole long bullet pointed list of essential life functions that the vagus nerve does, that one injury, that one intervention has a multitude of consequences short term, but most importantly in our conversation with pediatrics in the perfect storm, long term. So birth trauma, birth intervention is a big deal because the vagus nerve is very sensitive to its neuromuscular physical journey, if you will, down through the brainstem, through the cranial system, through the neck, and into the thorax. And so that is the biggest missing 
secret, if you will, in all of healthcare, that it's not just genetic and it's not just the gut. So medicine blames genetics, that G, natural health, functional, integrated medicine, awesomely, accurately blames the gut and gluten and those things. We could run the G's out, gliophosphate, and it's all part of the conversation because if you put toxins, you put bad food, you put chemicals into the system, they get into the gut, they create inflammation, and yes, the vagus nerve will pick up on those problems with the microbiome and inflammation, and it will tick off the vagus nerve, and it will. The vagus nerve is very sensitive first to physical trauma, second to chemical, emotional, inflammatory issues and toxins, and third to emotional stress as well. Here's the crazy thing. The vagus nerve is actually there to help us deal with those three things. If you're really picking up what we're putting down with the parasympathetic system and the vagus nerve, the vagus nerve is in charge of adaptability and resiliency, which is why a couple bullet points down the way here, we're gonna talk about at the end how to measure, find, and get vagus nerve function back online using something called HRV technology, heart rate variability, because that is now, not only is the science and the conversation catching up to say, hey, this electric system, this nervous system, you know, medicine has been into a multi, multi-quadrillion dollar industry on chemistry, when neurology has actually been the answer to health forever. Okay, so will they try and enter this market? You better believe it. You can mark my words. Whenever you listen to this podcast, maybe some of it will already have happened. They will get approval for vagus nerve simulators, which right now are approved for seizures because seizures live in a sympathetic dominant state. And so if you can trigger the vagus nerve and activate it through that vagal nerve stimulator, which is a parasympathetic response, hit the brakes to bring down the gas pedal. But mark my words, they will get approval for vagus nerve stimulators for anxiety, for ADHD, for autoimmune and arthritis and inflammatory conditions because the science that medicine, medicine right now is spending billions of dollars in developing and um, what's what I'm looking for here. Once they have a product, they've got to sell the product, right? To the government, to the insurance systems and get it approved. Uh, lobbying, that's what I'm looking for. So there is a developmental engine happening right now in biotech and that world all about this conversation. They would agree with it. It's just the action they're going to take is still going to be pharmacological or um, bioma- or a device, which is still outside in. And so what I want you to know, if you've read about vagal nerve simulators, you're looking into this conversation, because some of you who clicked on this are probably already pretty well versed in the vagus nerve, and you're looking to learn more. The thing that's really out there and really fascinating and really exciting for the future of healing is that we can activate and stimulate the vagus nerve naturally, and and we would almost kind of say innately, I know that's a goofy word, through the right kind of chiropractic adjustments and techniques. And for the most part, most kids, most families, I'm a little cart before the horse with my notes on this podcast, but most kids, most families, their vagus nerve, the nervous system damage, the subluxation, sympathetic dominance, vagus nerve dysfunction, dysautonomia, and nervous system dysregulation, which is a list of terms I just ripped through there that really means the same thing. That stress, physical injury, actually go in the order of the perfect storm. The first trigger of vagus nerve exhaustion is when it doesn't even develop appropriately. And so there's a whole paper that we've done, deep dive episodes, and we'll do more on coming up here in the spring um, about preconception, fertility, and pregnancy. We now know that fetal development, so infant in utero neurological development, the child's brain and nervous system, it depends upon vagus nerve development and autonomic nervous system function. And so when we have a high stress, high anxiety, high inflammation based pregnancy, we not only injure the vagus nerve per se, really what the research is telling us is one fascinating paper as well that we'll break down on that episode. It actually shows us that we delay and shut down vagus nerve development. So if you're picking up what I'm putting down, and again, full episode coming on that if you love that world of pregnancy, fertility, preconception, We actually have research now through mom's HRV and measuring it in different ways that we know that vagus nerve development is actually being delayed in utero and kids are being born in a sympathetic dominant state. That's what I've been teaching about the perfect storm forever. We're just getting more intricate and more granular in our understanding of the vagus nerve's role in all this. Then they go into birth trauma, birth intervention, physical injury to the vagus nerve through the neck, through the thorax, through cranial, what are called subluxations. So misalignment, fixation, 
tension, inflammation within the neurospinal system that ticks off the vagus nerve and literally interferes with the brain-body communication. And then you add toxins. And then you add chemicals. And so right now, if you're in this conversation with us in the thick of this podcast episode, and you're like, I've learned about the vagus nerve. And I know that in order to stimulate the vagus nerve for myself, I'm going to teach my kiddo how to do deep breathing. I'm going to teach my kiddo how to do humming. We are going to go outside with our feet off and we're going to regulate our nervous systems in the woods. And we're going to take essential oils and we're going to live an anti-inflammatory lifestyle and diet. We're going to add supplements and nourishments that are going to make the gut better. And we make the gut better. We're going to make the vagus nerve better. And that little list right there, I need you to tell you you're awesome and you're amazing and you are literally to the T moving in the right direction. But this is the most important part of this pod. If you have already heard about the vagus nerve and you tried to heal it for yourself or your, for kiddo, your kiddo, if you have already heard about the microbiome, the gut brain connection and the gut immune and nervous system connection, and you're trying to heal it through diet, nutrition, functional medicine, you're awesome. You're amazing. You're doing the absolute right things. But, and but is not my favorite word. You can ask my kiddos. They are not allowed to start sentences with the word but or well, because they're just about to make an excuse. So we teach our kiddos responsibilities and to be solutions oriented. Yes, that was a nerdy little parent tip in there, but it's a big one. I watch those words. "Ah, Whatever you say after that is just an excuse. Start over. So I'm about to use the word but not as an excuse, but as a contrast point to let you know that through this podcast and this episode right here, you found the unlock, you found the answer. If you've done everything medically and got nothing, and if you've done everything naturally, nutritionally, microbiomally, (laughs) making up that word on the fly here, and your child still hasn't gone through full, complete, multi-system healing, stimulating and activating the vagus nerve more potently might be the thing you're missing. And I want to finish this podcast by teaching a couple of minutes on a very important difference between nervous system regulation and nervous system healing, between vagus nerve regulation and vagus nerve healing, and what we would call restoration, repair, and reorganization within our nervous system-focused chiropractic care plans. See, when the vagus nerve is that downtrodden, when the vagus nerve has that deep level of what's called subluxation and dysfunction in its way, when the sympathetic nervous system through neuroplasticity has become so hardwired for your child or for you, those things like walking in nature, meditation, deep breathing, and supplementation, they aren't potently, they aren't potent enough to access the brainstem and the central and autonomic nervous system. So the answer here, moms, dads, practitioners, goes back to the anatomy, goes back to the function. That's why we needed to spend a lot of time on the anatomy and the function of the vagus nerve. We have to go at it, at its location. We have to go at it, at its subluxation. So subluxation means shut down. Subluxation means limited. Subluxation means interference. And so when subluxation, dysautonomia, and vagus nervous dysfunction are in there to even a mild, moderate, but especially most of our cases are dealing with severe vagus nerve dysfunction, dysautonomia, sympathetic dominance, parasympathetic exhaustion, it's so deeply woven and locked into the system that you need a more potent intervention to access it, stimulate it, and activate it. So we refer to this as neurologically focused chiropractic care. This is a different kind of chiropractic care than back pain, neck pain, frozen shoulder chiropractic care. They actually stimulate the nervous system as well. They're just maybe not as aware of it as we are and not as focused and they don't use as dialed in techniques. So we know exactly which techniques, exactly which frequency of a care plan, which is based upon neuroplasticity, we need to use to help a child's vagus nerve and parasympathetic system get back online, which is really the same thing as saying shutting down sympathetic dominance, releasing stuck tension with that subluxation and sympathetic overdrive. So however we talk about this, and there's with the nervous system and with the different terminology and functionality of this conversation, what we're saying is it's doing all these things through one thing, And that's what is so exciting. Because when you get nervous system focused, drug-free chiropractic, 
you can actually get that deeply into central nervous system and autonomic nervous system function. Now, how do we know this? How do we know that that's happening? Is it because there's tens of thousands of randomized clinical trials? No, randomized clinical trials are for treatment and cures. They don't get into the root cause, okay? They're for selling drugs, not creating health. What we know is we use this technology in our office. Actually, let me back up a step. Number one, we know this. Pretty much every kiddo I have taken care of clinically for the last 15 to 16 years has a multitude, at least two or three of these challenges that I'll list out one more time because the vagus nerve controls gut, GI, digestive function. It controls motility first, moving things along. And then once they're moving, it controls absorption, assimilation. So sending nutrients and things where they need to be. The vagus nerve is the great organizer or orchestrator. Think of it like a symphony and the vagus nerve is the conductor. So it sends those things where they need to go. And then it keeps sending bad things along so that the toxins, the unwanted foodstuffs can get out of the body, not stick around and cause inflammation. So the vagus nerve, we will do an entire deep dive into the vagus nerve, the gut brain connection and the microbiome. That's actually coming out here shortly after this episode. So that's going to be a gut brain connection episode, which is really going to be vagus nerve deep dive fully so focused on that. That's why I'm not going to go all the way into it on this. The vagus nerve controls the gut and immune system homeostasis. The vagus nerve through something called the nucleus tractus solitarius and all of these, it controls cytokines. It controls inflammation. So we're going to nerd out on another episode about the gut and immune system and really the neuroimmune regulation, which again is the vagus nerve. When in sympathetic dominance, that is pro-inflammation. So most kids we have from a colleague baby to a child locked into level three autism, guess what? Their gut system, their gut and GI motility doesn't work. Their absorption and elimination doesn't work. When a child is locked into sensory processing, they have an upset. They have sensory picky eating. They can't swallow. They can't. They can't get foods in. They can't digest them. So they have issues there. Anxiety, gut issues, constipation, sleep, vagus nerve. I didn't even put that on the list, right? So inflammation, kids are chronically sick. Most cases we take, teenagers with anxiety are sick all the time. So we've got to get these basic functions of vagal nerve function, gut function, immune system back online. Fourth, of course, is cardiac and respiratory. Fifth, speech and communication. Sixth, motor function, gross motor and fine motor. The vagus nerve goes to and hangs out around the cerebellum, which is gross motor and, and, and really balance and coordination and vestibular function. The vagus nerve also really goes goes with tiny little nerve endings to swallowing, to the tongue, to the jaw, to communication. If your child had tongue ties and restrictions, that sympathetic dominance, which would be there because of vagal nerve insufficiency, is why those tethers were there and remained tight. So if the dentist took a laser and clipped to them, but nobody addressed the vagus nerve dysfunction, subluxation, and sympathetic dominance underneath of that, then primitive reflexes, not a primary issue, they're secondary. Tongue ties, not a primary issue, they're secondary. Gut inflammation, not a primary issue, it's secondary. Immune system, constant activation, cortisol, cytokines, running rampant, pro-inflammatory all the time, sensitive, autoimmune, not actually a primary issue, the nervous system and vagus nerve dysfunction and dis autonomia is gross motor delays, vagus nerve, Exi anxiety, emotional, behavioral dysregulation like ADHD and autism, vagus nerve dysfunction function. That's this conversation because the seventh sense is, and again, these aren't ranked in one, two, like which one's more important developmentally. It's usually the gut and the motor and the immune. Those are kind of the basics. And then uh, cardiac and respiratory. And then we get into advanced function of speech, communication, social behavioral regulation, something called the polyvagal. We can do another whole episode on that. We will talk a ton about those components of ADHD, anxiety, and when we get in those conversations, you better believe that this episode and this sucker called the vagus nerve is going to come right back into that. So we talked about the function, the location, the multiple functions of the vagus nerve. I would honestly, to do, I think somewhere it's going to say on the title, right? I came out of it like, this is a deep dive into the vagus nerve. This is the first deep dive into the Vegas serve. It would take me literally 80 podcast episodes to get into the granularity and actually fully deep dive into what we know about the Vegas nerve, which is also where we can fly right back up into Iowa farmer simplicity and say, how freaking awesome is that then that when nervous system focused chiropractic adjustments can tap into the vagus nerve, tap into the central and autonomic nervous system and get it back in balance, get it regulated again. We can track it. We can measure it. We can know that that's working. 
How awesome is that? Because you better believe we expect miracles then. You better believe we experience miracles then. Because the miracles happen not through stuffing down symptoms and killing off viruses and bacteria and shutting down conditions. The miracles happen by activating healing within your child's body. It's already in there. The vagus nerve stimulates it, activates it, coordinates it, organizes it, and modulates it. So the vagus nerve and the autonomic nervous system is by far and away the most important conversation that I can have with you. One of the only people out there having this conversation. There's a ton about nutrition. There's a ton about medita meditation. There's a ton about supplementation. All of those are going to improve the function of the nervous system. But for most of your kiddos, most of your families, the nervous system is so subluxated so shut down and the vagus nerve is so dysfunctional, you need something more potent. And here's how you find out. Last part of this episode, if you feel like, dang, my child went through the perfect storm. Pregnancy was stressful. There was intervention. They were colicky. They were constipated. There was chronic ear infections. There was inflammation. There is gut issues. There is all these things. One, two, or 10 of them, then the vagus nerve is something you want to investigate and find out if vagus nerve dysfunction, dysautonomia, and subluxation is in your child's way of healing, restoring, and living their highest quality of life. Kids are so capable of healing that when we tap into this neurological restoration and nervous system focused healing through that kind of chiropractic, it's why we wear the tissue. So again, today's my nerd shirt, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. But most days you'll find me in a Hope Dealer, Expect Miracles or Experience Miracles t-shirt. That's my work gear, if you will, because that's absolutely what we expect when we do this kind of healing. We actually aren't the healer. We're the catalyst. The adjustment doesn't do the healing. The adjustment does the activation. The adjustment does the appropriate stimulation. The adjustment gets the sympathetic nervous system to chill out. The adjustment gets the vagus nerve to wake up. That's what's different about nervous system focused chiropractic and chiropractic as a whole versus medicine, both traditional and even natural. Okay. And there will be a time where we need traditional medicine. It saved my son's life. And then I was literally in the NICU making hands on sustained contact. If you saw it happen, you wouldn't even know it's happening. But I knew exactly where his vagus nerve had been injured by his traumatic fast birth. I knew exactly where his vagus nerve was trapped subluxated and interfered with. And I knew exactly where the parasympathetic plexus of the sacrum as well. And when I was adjusting Oliver in the NICU, if you've ever been in a hospital, whether it's a, an infant, this is very important functions for all of us, but you know, super extra important for infants is their blood pressure. So their heart rate, I'm sorry, blood pressure, heart rate, but, and then also oxygenation. So Oliver had PPHN, persistent pulmonary hypertension, and he needed ECMO, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. His heart and lungs his subluxation and sympathetic dominant injury was so bad, his heart and lungs couldn't get oxygen. They weren't moving. And so when he would go low oxygen, even after his surgeries and the things they had done to save his life, because that's what medicine does. When I contrast all the time on this episode, it's not a bash. It's not a put down. We need the pharmaceutical industry. We need the hospital industry. They save lives. We rebuild and restore them. And so when I was adjusting Oliver, I would literally have the nurses, they would pay attention. Usually the doctors would, you know, keep their head in the sand, but I could literally make a parasympathetic vagus nerve activating adjustment through what's called these tonal adjustments, which is what we're always talking about on here. And you could actually see his heart rate come down on the monitor and you could see his oxygenation when he was really struggling. He'd be at 81, 82, 84 on his sats. And I could through an adjustment in two, three minutes of activating and connecting his to his vagus nerve through this touch with the neurospinal system and through these adjustments, I could get his oxygenation to 94, 96, 98. And so the proof is in patience. The proof, yes, is in research. We've got it. You want to read all this? You want to learn about all this? You want to see all the citations that I'm literally referencing and going through with all these podcast episodes? Go to pxdocs.com. We have multiple articles about vagus nerve disorders, vagus nerve dysfunction, everything that's on there. And you'll see the citations that talk about the vagus nerve's role in inflammation, the gut, 
the, the, the immune system, social emotional activation, you name it. You'll see the research that we know high stress pregnancies, high inflammation pregnancies shut down vagus nerve function. You'll see the research that shows that birth interventions injure and mess with the vagus nerve. And when we take care of patients, we start with what's called HRV technology. So when I would see Oliver's heart rate come down, we measure not just heart rate on the number and on the nose with HRV. We could do this on infants, literally as many as, as a few hours old, this technology has been adapted. Same as an Oura ring, a Whoop, a Garmin, or an Apple Watch. Those are kind of a poor man's Dollar General Walmart version. Of, and I love them. I shouldn't say that. I wear one. Um, but compared to the technology we use in our office, it's like anything. You go to the doctor's office versus one you can buy at Best Buy. It's going to be much better technology. So our HRV technology measures not just heart rate, because yes, if it's too high, that's sympathetic dominance. That's a sign of vagus nerve insufficiency. But the V is the final thing I need to teach you on this, the variability. Our kids are designed to be adaptable. Our kids are designed to be resilient. The vagus nerve, the Vs go together. Variability, which is what HRV really, really measures, can tell us, because if it's not there, then we know the vagus nerve tone and function is shut down. So a poor score on HRV technology is a sign of parasympathetic exhaustion, vagal nerve dysfunction, and the same thing as saying sympathetic dominance. And over time, what we're finding with our adults, what we're finding with our teenagers, and sadly, even with some younger kids, is we're finding that their sympathetic nervous system was so wound up and their vagus nerve so shut down that by the time they get to POTS, by the time they get to depression, by the time they get to these chronic illnesses, actually the whole autonomic nervous system is shut down. Another deep dive episode coming up all about HRV. And again, go to our YouTube channel. You actually see a bunch of videos about dysautonomia and the vagus nerve where we'll show you these HRVs, pre and post patient care, nervous system focused chiropractic care. And you'll be able to see that come up. But we actually see kids today, especially through our intensive program, that kids are both parasympathetic and sympathetic exhausted. Now, that's the last nerdy thing to teach you on this vagus nerve deep dive episode, but that's how deep, that's how chronic sympathetic dominance, vagus nerve dysfunction has become even in the pediatric and teenager population. This is a very serious conversation. My family joking Las Vegas story in the beginning and a few dad jokes I maybe snuck into the middle was to just lighten the mood a little bit to tell you we're really up against it with our kids' nervous systems. We're really up against it with our nervous systems. So again, I'm just going to say one more time, there's a difference between nervous system regulation and support, like cold plunging, saunas, and walking in nature, and, and supplementation, and anti-inflammatory diets, and meditation, and all the things. Those are awesome. Those are not near as potent as the right kind of chiropractic care and body work that you need to get, perhaps for your infant who had a really stressful pregnancy, developmental period, and a tough birth. Perhaps for your child who's locked into autism and you've tried everything under the sun to get him out of it, the vagus nerve might be that key unlock. For your child who's locked into ADHD and anxiety and they just can't calm down, the vagus nerve is probably shut down. For your child who's dealing with autoimmune conditions, constantly sick, pandas, pans, asthma, allergies, every time they get a cold, they keep it all winter, the vagus nerve might be the unlock because when the sympathetic dominance, we actually even mess with mucus, inflammation, everything. I can go on and on, and I have, and the truth is learning more about the vagus nerve, step one. Learning more about HRV and how to find out if your kid's vagus nerve is toast, step 1B, getting nervous system focused chiropractic to get that vagus nerve, to get the autonomic nervous system back online, because doing that one thing can help with all of these other things. And so what I want you to do from this episode is number one, subscribe to this podcast. If you haven't been downloading it and you haven't subscribed to make sure that every Tuesday and soon we'll be dropping two a week, that it pops up first so you see the next ones because this is the conversation that's going to transform your family's health. Because I know that many of you, medicine hasn't done the job. And I know that many of you going to the nth degree with natural and, and holistic has done an awesome job but maybe not completed the job. So that's why God sent us here with this job to be that nervous system focused, obsessive, relentless conversation here on your favorite podcast platform, Instagram at PX Docs, 
Facebook, same thing. I think if you type in my name too, it sounds like a bad nervous system folk band. Dr. Tony and the PX Docs. That's on Facebook. You got to say it like that. Go to YouTube, subscribe, follow there. My kids will think I'm cool the more YouTube subscribers I get. But share the heck out of this as well. So many of your friends, so many of your family members themselves, their kids, the whole family is looking for healing. And the vagus nerve is the place that millions of us need to find, need to get ourselves into nervous system focused chiropractors. And as always, we've got you covered there. If you go to pxtalks.com, you can not only get all the articles and all the resources and all the research and all the links to all the videos and the webinars and things that we do, but you can get access to nervous system focused chiropractors through our directory as well. You want that kind of chiropractic? That's what that is for. Those are the chiropractors who are trained, focused, use HRV, use this technology. It's right there. It's built for you. The education, the resources, the connections, that's what this podcast, we know the adjustment can be the catalyst to your child's full and complete healing. And I should say adjustments because care plans work. Um, and, and we want this podcast to be the catalyst to you finding those answers you've been hoping for, you've been praying for, you've been scrolling for, you've been searching for. So we know that other parents are as well. So we're so dang glad and so grateful we found you. Please share this. Please subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.